So I'm Elizabeth, as I said, I'm representing British Cattle Veterans Association, but also RUMA, so I'm an independent oh, member of RUMA. For those of you who aren't fully aware of what RUMA does, it was set up in 1997. It was um, uh, primarily vet and industry, um, and it was about best practice. So there are a load of best practice guidelines produced across all production sectors. So we went from poultry to cattle. Initially, there were 25 organisations, and we, we did go literally from farm to farm right through to production um, and retailers. And in addition to that, we had independent members. So I came on as an independent cattle member. So in addition to that, we actually have a medic who sits in rumour. Um, he's a, an Oxford professor, but he's really, really good. And he's actually quite, quite pro-animal, um, whereas a lot of medics always seem to be pro their, their um, initial degree. And alongside that, VMD attend, Food Standards Agency. So we have quite, a, it's a quite a wide range. So within those guidelines, we did look about stressing what was best practice. Um, and we did talk about minimising antimicrobial use, but it probably wasn't our top line, line message. Um, and we were funded quite in a, quite an archaic way, <laughs> in terms of um, members would put in money and we had A tier and B tier membership. Um, and it, it, it was always discussions about how much money went in and things like that. But what we did realise is that as, as a reactive organisation, and everybody had the best intentions, it certainly wasn't doing the best for the industry in terms of a proactive message. Um, and pigs came under the spotlight in many ways. And so then we decided that at, at, um, moving forward, we had to change. So somebody may know about Amy Jackson, who uh, does a lot in terms of communication. And she presented at one of our rumour conferences about how poorly we were doing in terms of getting our message across. Um, so we thought, right, we'll invite her in. So we employed her as our communication manager and said, take us on board, move us forward, Amy. So now our income is massive. It does mean that we can be proactive in terms of websites, messages, using Amy to her full potential, but also having more um, membership in terms of these independent members. So we're managing to communicate better across all fields. We've taken on board the, the uh, Animal Scientific Procedures Act to reduce, refine, replace, and we've applied that to antimicrobial use. We'll also move on to anthelmintics because we realise antimicrobial just was the tip of the iceberg. There are other things below that that we need to look at changing. And we increase the membership of our independent scientific group. So we now have... Um, environmental scientists as well as that human, those, the medical side. And we're much more proactive in terms of messages and technical, ex technical knowledge and exchange. And the third bit, which was definitely news to me, was uh, setting up this target task force. So as an independent member, I fed in mainly on the cattle side and I had a BCBA hat on, but I was invited to join this target task force. And it was naivety because I certainly had no idea quite what I was letting myself in for. And this arose because of um, Jim O'Neill's report. So um, Jim O'Neill is an economist. He isn't a, a, a vet or a medic, and he came purely from that economic side. He did a great report and he challenged both of the sectors. Um, perhaps not the environmental sector as much, but certainly the human and the animal side. Um, and these were headlines in terms of what that meant in terms of public perception as well. I'm not going to read them out. I'll let you have a quick read in terms of what they say. The other thing with O'Neill's report was he took quite an international view um, and actually, I think as, uh, as Europe, we're probably ahead of some other countries, but it doesn't mean to say that we can't improve. So some of his messages were taken on board, but actually they may not have been strictly relevant to either the UK or the European situation. And alongside that, in terms of his international view, he set targets. So again, everybody's probably fully aware of that 50 mg per kilogram target. That is a whole production target um, and certainly something I realised when we went towards forward as, um, in terms of that target task force was I may think that my sector as cattle is okay but actually we're a whole production industry and we're not going to um, say one's worse than another, we're all going to have that figure and we're going to embrace it. 
And we had the 2014 as our baseline. Um, and a 20% reduction probably doesn't look too taxing. But actually, when you take it as a whole production sector, there are areas that we need to focus on. Um, and then we just, alongside that, everything is always going to be evidence-based. So we had to look at how we were going to set those targets and how we were going to collect that data. Definitely, for some sectors, the, the, is indus, uh, uh, the issue may be how much the antimicrobials are being used, but for other sectors, it may be collecting evidence. Um, and then the last one is the critically important. And certainly as BCVA, we came out with a, a target in terms of best practice on terms of antimicrobial use, looking at the whole of um, EBD, Yonis, that type of thing, but also uh, those critically important antimicrobials and how the appropriate use should be done. So we first met in this target task force in 2016. We had um, a vet and a farmer from um, each sector. In terms of cattle, we had a dairy and a beef farmer. Um, and um, in terms of poultry, we would have a, a, a layers and a production, a broiler one, that type of thing. Um, you have across that, I have to admit, fish usually come to conference called in because they were set up in uh, the glorious uh, highlands and um, they usually called in. But it was really good to have that cross sector. I certainly welcomed it. I, I, I thought I was aware of what was happening in other sectors, but it was really useful to see the individual approach and everybody learnt from different approaches. We had two monthly meetings um, and we were told to challenge ourselves. So I think on that first meeting when the sticky pieces of paper went up, I was like, oh my goodness, this is what is going to happen here and how are we going to go forward? And there was definitely a lot of flurries in the last minute, but I think we did challenge ourselves. So this was our report, came out in 2017. Uh, some, particularly say VMD, that I think they did wonder if we challenged ourselves enough. Um, and I firmly robust that in terms of cattle sector, I think we did, and we came out with quite detailed targets as to what we should do. Um, and interestingly, normally the rumour conference was, uh, uh, we, we always felt that we could improve. This one we came out with a really positive message and everybody attending, I don't know, did anybody in this room go to that rumour conference? Yeah, and it, it was, yeah, I think really, really good, yeah. It's a sad that um, some of the national press didn't pick it up more, but in terms of those who attended, I think it was a really positive message. So in terms of industry, so I've mentioned pigs and I haven't probably mentioned poultry. Poultry are really vertically integrated, great integration, amazing what they can achieve, um, particularly when you think of the profit margins within that. But again, it's quite formulaic and it doesn't necessarily apply to a, a dairy and a beef industry. But they've managed a 71% reduction. They probably said, this is where we're going to stop. We may not achieve more. And that's where that whole sector industry comes in because they may or may be a, around that 50 mg per kilogram but they've said this is where we can go in terms of health and welfare and we may be having issues so the other sectors have to take up that slack. Pigs, um, Mark White um, sometimes was nearly in tears at those room at those target task for meetings and Rebecca's smiling, he was wasn't he? Um, but he did a brilliant job in terms of um, uh, getting together the pigs. It's a smaller number of vets. It's uh, again a slightly more integrated industry from than dairy and beef, but they've really, really challenged themselves, and I, I, it's uh, impressive the progress they're making and the data they're managing to gather. As dairy, we were next on the list, and we may think, oh, we're okay, but actually we were a production sector, and we had to all take it on board. So we were going to be the next one in terms of that, and beef. I think they all thought they were well under the radar, not, no need to worry about it, they were going okay. Whilst we had a beef and a dairy farmer, we did know there was crossover. So most, uh, I mean 50% of beef actually comes from the dairy sector in terms of cull cows, but even calves. So we can't just say it's just one, we are dairy, we are beef, we have to join together. Um, so as I say, we were dairy was perceived as being third in terms of um, usage and we had we did have some figures on that um, and a lot of that we used was uh, uh, individual milk pools but also we had the vase 
Um, so that's uh, uh, sales data. So sales data is quite blunt. Um, and we do know that sometimes um, how it's aggregated in terms of so uh, injections all went to into cattle in terms of if it had a, uh, even if it had a pig license. Um, Intrafeed went all into pigs and it was that type of thing. So it's quite broad, but it does give us a background figure. Sadly, in 2016, um, the figure went up, which was a bit disappointing, um, and particularly even within um, intramammary use. Um, but what we do know is because it's quite blunt and it's done on active ingredients, so if you change in terms of intramammary from a, a single-use antibiotic product to a product which has got two antibiotic components in there, that may not be much in terms of mix per kilogram, but it does change in terms of that overall figure. And when the VMD starts using their formulas, we do see potentially an increase in what was intramammary use, but it may not be a true increase. It's a complex picture. And this is always hard to get across to journalists because you're trying to explain and it sounds like you're making excuses. But when you actually look at the fine detail, it's a very valid reason. So I'm happy to discuss that. Alongside that, there are some areas where actually should we really be using antibiotics in that thing. So in BCVA, we've done really hard in terms of getting out the message of not putting particularly tetracyclines in milk, partly because it's collated. Now we've seen, and the VARS data showed that, an increase of tetracyclines which were putting, uh, being put into feed. When you actually look at the calcium content in milk and feed, it's the same. So if they're going to be collated in milk, they're going to be collated in feed. So actually how much is available? And pharmacokinetics and pharmacodynamics are something that a lot of farmers don't understand, but as vets, we should be thinking about that. So it's a questionable practice, not only in terms of it's a potentially prophylactic or metaphylactic use, but it's also probably not actually the greatest way to use an antibiotic. And it always ups your mix per kilogram figure. Ultimately, that's the figure we're going to have as our overall, so we have to think about that. Antibiotic foot bathing, there's been letters in the vet record about that. It's a big figure again. And is it a proper, appropriate use and is it good use? And how effective is it? Questionable. So these are our targets. Again, they're there, they're out in the public. I'm not going to dwell too much. But we do um, have to look at that overall figure. So the VMD and BCB are having chats about how you calculate, particularly for intramammary, and what it means. So there, and then we've aimed, we started off as our baseline figure of 26.2. This was done from some robust data, and we aim for a 20% reduction. The biggies are actually probably, in terms of um, those high priority criti critically important, in terms of injectables, and we will achieve that. And the intramammary, again, we should achieve, but we um, uh, do need to focus on that. They are actually tiny in terms of the mix per kilogram number, but they're politically important figures. So although you may say, oh, it's, it's, it's a tiny amount what, that we're actually using, it's, a, it's the message overall as well. Where was beef? Always where was beef? Where did we have the hard data? What were we doing? It was perceived as being a low user, but was it really? And when you start talking about your denominator and what is your denominator for beef, it becomes even more complex. And we knew that in terms of beef, we had those issues of respiratory disease, all of those calf ones, which is partly why we're here today. Um, and alongside that lameness, uh, we've got calving problems, but I don't think they're a big user, but they're still down there and they're a top line figure. And data still remains an issue. <laughs> So within beef, we, had, we separated out our targets, and beef was done slightly differently from the dairy one. In terms of dairy, was there like, a, this is where we think we are, this is the reduction, this is where we're going to be. And beef was a more generic one going forward. Um, and it was good, actually, because it actually means that in terms of we've now joined the two task force together, but we have that uh, softer and harder targets to look at. Um, and again, those are some of the bio, those are different ones in terms of this is one I slide put forward in terms of overall the reduction, 50% reduction in mix per kilogram, increase in vaccination, increase in collecting biometrics, benchmarking, training, and that type of thing. We started off with two uh, sector target task force, so a dairy and a beef. Literally last week we joined the two together, which I think is a really positive. I, I'm, I can see why it started off separately because we had the different targets, but actually joining the two together, most of the people um, are the same people going to two meetings, we're all busy, it's much better, and we can also have those cross messages. Um, 
In terms of uh, dairy strategy, Rebecca's working on that and the beef one, so it's hot, it's going to be hot off the press. Um, and the electronic medicines book is relevant across both sectors. So Mary, um, very much leading on that, aren't you? Mm. Um, in addition, we've got that bottom line, the vet and press data. So this is some sales data to specific practices. Um, the practices generally remain the same. So we had the first vet and press data last year, and we've got um, more vet and press data this year. And that looks at just what's sold onto a farm. We try and then split, so, so that vet and press data tries to give a, a dairy beef split, but it's not a perfect split. Um, and then looking at critically important antimicrobials. So as I said, BCVA produced a, a top line target that it shouldn't be used. When the VMD um, licensed the second um, la launch of all these high priority critically important, they put something in the um, uh, data sheet or the specific product characteristics that weren't in the original one. So there was a third generation cephalosporin that was launched probably, I, I've been qualified over 30 years, and it was launched not long after I qualified. Um, and that didn't have it, but all the next launch of these ones, the VMD put in that this was going to be a second or a third line treatment. I don't think most vets read those specific product characteristics or those data sheets, but it also had in that you should do testing um, in terms of to determine whether you talk sensitivity or resistance, because most of the time probably you just want to show that what you were going to use is resistance rather than what you are going to use is sensitive, because it's always difficult in practice in terms of working out what you've got in terms of resistance and sensitivity. It's, a, it's another lecture in itself. Um, and so definitely the use of them increased. Farmers leapt on them, vets did. But what, what we then said is actually, when I qualified, we didn't have them. I don't think I lost animals any more or any less than when we did or didn't have them. Um, and we, these are critical to the human medicine field. Um, I'm attended, I, I sit on an NHS panel on bloodstream infections and um, antimicrobials. Um, and when you look at some of the people there in terms of what they're treating, you realize that it is critical. Um, death is not quite as serious in the veterinary world as in the human world, and we have to think about that. So the VMD cleverly put in, this was a second or third line. We as a profession perhaps didn't acknowledge quite what that meant, but now we do need to. Um, I'm trying to be politically correct and I'm not renowned for my tact. Um, so hopefully if you have any questions, please ask, because I think it's best that it's really clear. So now we do have to acknowledge that we restrict what we, how we use them. And we actually, is it going to be a disaster? Probably not. We have, as I've mentioned already, the VMD uh, sales data. We still weren't sure. We had some vet and press data, and when we looked at it, we didn't think the figure was right when we did the initial targets a year ago. We have a second figure. And it looks like using 5% of herds, we're at 15 mg per kilogram, which is probably higher than some of the data that we had when we were initially looking at that target. We thought we were probably near a 10, but it looks like we're 15. Um, and this day figure will come out, um, and then it can be reported, but right now it is definitely restricted. Um, the MD were very good to share this with me, but I don't think we want it outside. In terms of dairy, we've got a lot of variation. We have milk fields where uh, we're as low as 10. We have some where as, low as, as high as 20. HPCIA, we've gone up slightly, but I think it will be, it'll be there. We will hit that target, I have no doubt. It's a, it's a, a moving thing, and sometimes people... Um, it, it, because it's sales data, it's complex in terms of what it means actually in terms of on-farm use. So if anybody's gone on um, the sister site or brother site to the rumour one, this is about farm antibiotics. It's a really, really good website. I use it quite a lot in terms of graphics, p um, data and things like that. Um, and that's sort of some of the top line messages in terms of getting out. This is some of the other messages in terms of um, Amy's colostrum is gold and vaccination helps, improves. <laughs>